it is a very tragic moment. Uh, it is a moment of horrific uh, uh, violence. Um, something that uh, even the reg this, this region that has seen so much violence has seldom uh, experienced. And uh, in the end, you see the suffering of the Palestinians with so many children and uh, young people killed in Gaza. You know, over 50% of the population of Gaza is under 15 years old. So think of the hatred that this has left for the future. Nobody in this case thinks of tomorrow, let alone the day after tomorrow. And it hasn't given Israel uh, the security it hoped. So in the end, to put it bluntly and cruelly, the Palestinians suffer and the Israelis lost. So what is the point of it? You have many young people in your orchestra. How has the orchestra changed and evolved? And uh, has the personnel changed radically from the beginning? First of all, I have to tell you, in the present situation with Gaza, I was sure some people would back out and would cancel saying, I cannot now play with the other. And I would have understood it. And I am so happy and so proud, I say that unashamedly, so proud that not one musician cancelled his coming. Will it be as, will it be harder, do you think, to recruit for the orchestra? You want youngsters to come on board? Is it harder now? The political situation now is much worse than it was 15 years ago. So the simple answer is yes. The more complex answer is it is more, dif more complicated rather than more difficult. Do you think that will give an added, as it were, emotion to tomorrow night's performance, that everybody is there watching Palestinians playing their instruments in harmony with Israelis and vice versa? A few days ago, we played at the Lucerne Festival in Switzerland. And suddenly, in the middle of all this, I realized there comes the flute solo. And I looked, and this group of Arabs in the orchestra were wishing him the best and were trying in their own instruments to support him. And a few minutes later, when it was the clarinet, the group of the Israelis, as part of the orchestra, supported him too. Where else do you have that? What do you feel about uh, boycotting arts events run by Israeli companies? I think I can understand the impulse to boycott things that come from a country that has not shown uh, enough interest in advancing a peaceful solution, which many Palestinians rightly feel. I can understand that. Um, I think one has to differentiate between uh, Israelis who represent the government and cultural people or institutions that do not represent the government. I think that to say I boycott everything that is Israeli, though emotionally maybe understandable, is counterproductive. I think that it has to be very clearly defined. And I think, above all, it must not turn into an anti-Semitic uh, tendency. And I think that the wave of the so-called anti-Semitism, which is not anti-Semitism, it is anti-Jewish in the world, is unacceptable, unacceptable. And not only unacceptable because of the history. You know, in the end, all it does is it gives Adolf Hitler a posthumous victory. Finally, in 2012, you were part of the Olympic opening ceremony because you brought harmony where there was discord, and it must have been a very big moment for you. Um, were you more optimistic then than you are now, or do you still have optimism? 
I have optimism because the world never stops. The world has always continued. Every one who has his own personal tragedy in some way or other overcome these tragedies and the world uh, develops and it goes on. And uh, if you look, try to look realistically, the world looks terrible now. It looks like the Pope said on the brink of a third world war. Ukraine, Iraq, the Middle East, etc., etc. But uh, we haven't got, we don't have the luxury to base in pessimism. We really don't. We really don't because it only makes it worse. We have to continue, and we don't. When we don't believe, we have to make believe, and eventually take the make away.